All right. Saturday morning. Good morning. It's cool and crisp where I am. I hope you guys are having a good morning this morning. I started the stream a little bit early because I was thinking that I was going to have the entire morning to myself, be alone. But apparently my uh, builder needs to come over and see me. And he wants to come over at 11 and it's now currently 10 29. so i so we're going to see if we can get everything done we need to get done within 30 minutes no doubt he'll be anywhere between five and 50 minutes late because that's how he rolls uh and i thought we'd get together and have a quick chat uh so i wanted to you know obviously build still building this ding dong of a house still living in a barn it's all very exciting I do have books and I've got some games and I have a small gaming space and we're making do and we're getting things done. It's uh, <clears throat> very different, but it's also gives me a, a really good appreciation for folks that have a limited amount of space and how you can optimize things and actually get a lot done and play a lot of larger games, smaller scenarios inside larger games. So that's kind of cool. Um, Right. Uh, let's see. I wanted to, so I wanted to talk about the giveaway. I want to talk about what I've been playing. I want to talk about what I might get to play for the balance of the year. Uh, I want to talk about a kind of a funding idea uh, to allow me to do a few things, see if that resonates with anybody. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm just, let me click a, Hey, good morning, John. Uh, so if you are just checking in, do say hi, and we'll pop your commentary up on the on the screen and all that good stuff, as long as it's nice. Uh, and what else I was going to say? Yeah, so I wanted to talk about the giveaway. Will talk will lead me into talking about the idea behind the Substack, which I've discussed once before in a prior giveaway. And let me see what else I have down here. I think that was it. That's all I really want to get through. Oh, I got a couple of things. I'll, we'll do a couple of in the house, uh, look at a couple of new things that came in. Uh, one game in particular that came in. I'm not going to do a, sh a shrink rip per se, uh, but we'll just have a quick discussion about this particular system. And I think it's, uh, it's kind of cool. It's old school. I actually already own an entire set of it, but I picked up another set and we'll talk about that in a second as well. All right. So, Building the house kind of leads me into the, the some of these uh, ideas that I had around trying to fund some things that I want to do because I want to do more content creation uh, with designers and developers and stuff like that. And a lot of those folks tend to spend time at cons. I was having a conversation with my wife uh, last night about trying to get up to the Compass, uh, Compass Games Expo and... You know, I have mileage, so I can fly pretty much anywhere I need to and all that sort of fun stuff. But we're still going to do rental cars and accommodations and bits and pieces. So uh, we were talking about that. And she's like, ah, oh, you know, we're trying to budget because we're building and all this sort of stuff. And we were, last night we were eating and we were eating some of her zucchini that she had grown. And I said, well, right now we're eating your $400 zucchini because that's how much it costs to grow the damn things, right? With all these flower beds and vegetable beds and nonsense that she's got to buy. Sprinkler systems and all this business, right? Which she's all done on the cheap and it's been awesome, right? But still, it was a $400 a king. Uh, so I was uh, trying to work out, you know, other ways that uh, will leave her less tearing her hair out and being more... Uh, kind to me and let me uh, get out on the road a little bit. I was supposed to go to a con a couple of weeks ago. I think it was actually last week, but uh, couldn't really get a solid schedule lined up in terms of game play. And it was really going to be for me to go play games, not to interview folks, because there were a couple of designers that are going to be there, but uh, and then one canceled. Uh, but uh, it's more of a gameplay con for me. I tend to I tend to uh, like to go to these cons to play games, but since I've been doing this blog for so long and the YouTube channel for a while, uh, when it, like from, for instance, when I went to the CSW con in in, uh, in Dallas earlier this year, that was excellent. And I actually got to meet a lot of designers, some folks I wouldn't have normally been able to meet. Uh, got to meet a lot of people who view the channel as well, which was really kind of cool, very awkward, but cool because 
it's odd to have people come up and say hi and like they know you and you don't even know who they are because you only know the little name on the screen here. Uh, so, um, I, yeah, and, and John, I don't want to do a Patron page because I don't want to raise money every month. That's not going to make, uh, you know, like it's not a lifestyle thing for me. I What I'm thinking about is how can I structure something so that maybe it's a Kickstarter or something like that where I just say, hey, look, I need $2,000 to pay for hotel rooms and rental cars. And if I could get that and I could go to two cons or three cons, I'll pay my airfares and all that sort of nonsense and my food and eating and all that. But I wouldn't, but I'm not interested in, I'm not interested in trying to make this a, a revenue stream, right? Because I have other ideas for revenue streams. And, and, and that leads me to some uh, commentary about my professional life, which we can lightly touch on. Uh, I mentioned on one uh, one uh, live stream with some some of the Wargamer gangs that I was interested in trying to start a uh, barrel aged aging barrel finishing of bourbons. Uh, that little experiment hasn't worked out terribly well to date. It's going to have to wait until we move into the house where I've got some more space because I'm actually going to need to buy seasoned port and uh, musket barrels and buy the like the big 20, 40 liter ones. Uh, you can't do it with these little uh, one liter ones. I was trying to season them with my with a bottle of port and then clean them and rinse them and then have that residue and then age the uh, the bourbon. It was terrible. It didn't taste good at all. And these small barrels uh, dry out super quick and uh, there are issues with those. So that whole nonsense has to get tabled. I was kind of excited about that. But uh, I did all the the... Well, I shouldn't say all. I did most of the legal prep to uh, understand what the licensing complications were and issues were. But the actual mechanics of uh, the finishing process need a lot of work. So it's not as easy as, as it looks. Uh, surprise, surprise. So there you go. So there was that. Uh, and professionally, I'm, uh, I'm making a change with my uh, career. I'm leaving the company I'm at. I was the CEO at that. And I'm uh, starting a new business with a, a business partner of mine from the past and a couple of investors, and we'll see how that all goes. But it's been kind of, kind of, uh, kind of hectic with that. So that has nothing to do, however, with wargaming. So we're going to ignore that nonsense. Other than it impacts my time for content creation, you may have noticed that I've kind of slacked off a little bit. I uh, have all, a huge backlog of uh, articles and plays and stuff with you know images and whatnot. So with that in mind, let's talk about some more games and let's talk about this giveaway first because I know a lot of people are probably here for the giveaway, not to hear about my freaking personal life. So I've got two things I want to do to give away. I was just going through some magazine games and stuff like that that I uh, have not um, played with or used or looked at in quite a while and I thought it would be good to I give a couple of things away. So the first one, and I, I don't even know how interesting this is, and I'm just going to I'm gonna throw it out there. Uh, it's a Special Ops magazine, summer 2014, issue five. It's got a bunch of ASL scenarios in it and an ASL map. And it's got a game, uh, Bushy Run. It's uh, a Brits versus the Indians, uh, it's sort of uh, this uprising or whatever. So we'll add that to the giveaway draw. I'll do two, two draws. But maybe uh, there's a couple of interesting articles in here about it never snows. It's obviously all MMP centric. Let me tell you what the scenarios are. Is there a little listing here? It's map 89. And then there's uh, one and the Chaz Argent scenarios and a Joe Gochinski scenario and a Vincent Marcheska scenario. So, uh, or Mareska scenario. So four scenarios in here, S56, S57, 09, and 10. So we'll do that. You know, you may or may not want it. And if you don't want it, when I draw your name, tell me, uh, I'll probably, um, there's going to be some stuff that's either going to be given uh, away like this or thrown away because I'm tight on space. I received a copy of this in the mail from Tiny Battle. Uh, I had actually reached out to them and asked for a discount copy, which they were kind enough to do. And I you know, made arrangements to 
pay for that and did my review or my playthrough or whatever. Uh, one of the scenarios of that quite enjoyed it. I think I gave it quite a glowing review because it's you know another iteration of Herman's system. Uh, oh, and for the for James uh, Gabino, his name's on the back there, bro. It says uh, it says Herman Lemon right there, so that's all good. Hey, Richard, and hey, uh, uh, Fred, good to see you on Lucky 13. Uh, uh, and thanks for the nice comments. Uh, so I'm going to give this away. And the only thing you need to do, because my blog sucks, I, I am struggling to work out how to uh, reinstate the subscribe button for, for, <laughs> for your email subscription to my blog. And I was wondering why, I was wondering why, I guess about 18 months ago, I changed the theme on my blog on the WordPress press plug and and the email subscription thing went away and i couldn't work out why I, a i wasn't getting any more subscribers and b why the damn uh the damn uh view count kept going down and i was producing about the same amount of content uh it's because the the theme is different and it removed the uh, subscri subscription button so you don't have to subscribe to my my blog <laughs> to be in the running but you do have to subscribe to and i would appreciate if you subscribe and kind of stay right you can be that guy and or girl and subscribe and i'll do the drawing and then you can unsubscribe i don't care it's okay uh bigboard.substack.com in fact i will type that in here because that's where you need to go. Let's find it. Stack. Oh, I think it might be big board gaming. Let's check real quickly. No, it's big board. All right. I don't know, a lot of you are already subscribed. I've seen like eight or 10 folks subscribe already. I get little notifications when people subscribe. Uh, so that's awesome. Uh, anyone who's already a subscriber, of course, will be in the running. And that's the way I'm gonna do them going forward because I can see all the subscribers in one, on one page and they're listed from one to 76 at the moment. It's a tiny little thing. It's where I do all my narrative writing now. I'm trying to split the two uh, because you know, one day I might do something different with the narrative stuff, and I want to uh, I want to build a readership uh, around those that are interested in the narrative business, the narrative content. Uh, so we're going to do this. It's a fun game, fast player, tight system. It's great. I would say this is a, actually a pretty good introductory war game as well. So if you find someone who is curious about the American Civil War or likes the American Civil War or wants to learn more about the American Civil War, Champion Hill, Hill of Death from Tiny Battle Publishing would be the first one I would lean on. There are some simpler systems, I am sure, like the uh, SBI reboot. Um, what's his name's game? I forget what his name is, but uh, that guy. Uh, so uh, let's do a quick. Uh, so that's the the giveaway nonsense. Let's talk about what I've been playing, and then I'll show you this uh, this uh, this system that I bought. I think I may have overpaid. I'm feeling like I overpaid, but it's okay. Now that I've seen what's in the box, I think I've definitely overpaid because I paid a lot for a lot of paper, uh, but we'll get to that in a sec. So I'm playing Third World War on Monday nights and probably as of this Monday, I'll look to try and live stream some or all of that gameplay. It's on Vassal and it's with my buddy Steve from Australia. So Monday nights at 7 p.m. Central, you should just look for a link on my big board page. You really don't want to go out now, bro. Sit. So well, there'll be that. That's going on. We've done two sessions so far. We've got through the first six or seven political cards. The Americans have decided to invade Iran and the Soviets have not yet. They have mobilized, but they have not uh, done their activation or, in activation or intervention. Uh, session there. Politics did stop. Excuse me. Dog on it. No joke, dude. Five bucks says he'll be back in a few minutes. Wanting to come in. Do you like my sweatshirt? This is actually a Polo Ralph Lauren sweatshirt I bought. 
I think 27 years ago, <laughs> as you can tell, it's pretty scratchy. Uh, but it's cozy, it's 50 degrees outside, so I'm, I'm, uh, I don't have the heat on. I like it, I like it cool in the house, but uh, not too uh, not too hot, so I like to wear a little sweatshirt action. All right, look at all you people. I'm going to come to that in a sec. Let me let me deal with what I'm playing with playing, and then we'll. Uh, hey Jeff, good to see you, and Chris, good to see you, and Neil, good to see you, and Kilroy, good to see you. Oh, we got people. Treb, good to see you, my friend. All right, so Third World War, come and try and join in. I, I'm we we may do the the voiceover on uh, Discord, and then we will. Uh, and I'll live stream it here. I got to make sure all my OBS uh, studio stuff works so that the, the resolution is acceptable. Because the last few times I did live streams of DAC with Vassal for DAC 2, it was miserable for viewing experience. I found out later. So, uh, <coughs> so there's that. So, Sands of Time uh, 96 97. Yes, good game. Uh, I, I'm not a fan of the counter fonts it would be my first concern issue i think little subsequent releases like kharkov battles much better counters much better uh well the maps are fine uh cleaner rule book for sure there's a lot of uh there's a lot of detail in that uh all blau 42 game that probably needs could could have used some clarity uh from blanchett from gregory uh and there's also a hack in the game that you can be gamey and uh, win as the Germans pretty easy, which is disappointing. And it's a function of one of the one of the release rules for the Soviets. So I'll say that up front. So if you're going to play it and play the campaign, you you want to agree up front that you're going to manage the uh, manage that goofy rule. All right. So I'm going to take that off the screen. So it's a great game. There's an expansion in. Kharkov battles that adds another map and more counters. So if you get those two things, if you if by that game and the Kharkov battles, then you're going to have uh, quite quite the monster to play with. All right, I'm also uh, next March, April. I'm going to a con, I'm going to a con, and it's a gaming con. It's not one of those. So if I did do some sort of fundraising nonsense, uh, it would not be one of the ones I would be using uh, subscribers' money for or or, or KS money for to. To pay for it's just i'm going to play games i'm gonna uh play with ralph shelton and we're gonna play deadly northern lights we're gonna pick a smaller scenario uh, one or two mapper uh probably well mate i don't know which one so we'll see i'm letting him choose and uh, i'm sorry, excited about that but that will mean that we will need to do some pre-work some prep and so uh, we will run one maybe probably a full turn uh on vassal and if that's the case i will either uh, vlog that and then record it with some comments or if Ralph's cool then we'll do it live but Ralph and I when we we play we usually have a, a couple of drinks and and hang out and it gets kind of saucy so uh it's probably not going to be uh family friendly uh then there may be other commentary that is uh, not appropriate for uh, to be shared uh so there's that coming you know I'm playing or if you follow at all I'm playing uh, a time for trumpets <laughs> I'm playing the Bastogne scenario, and uh, I'm I've kind of I, we had people over the other night, so I had to put a, uh, a cover over it and set it aside. I'm going to pull it back out today, hopefully, and get another turn done. So we'll get two or three turns into it. I am uh, I'm, my level of interest is fading fairly quickly, but I'm trying to man up and have the intestinal fortitude to stick with it. So. I'll discuss all the reasons why later, because those reasons may change uh, as we as we get further into it. I enjoyed my guided play with Bruno. I'm not really enjoying my unguided play by myself, so <clears throat> there's that. Uh, I did play a quick uh, scenario of uh, Day of Heroes from Lock and Load Tactical. I, you know, I love the modern stuff from those guys. Uh, I'll have some sort of report on that in the near future. I don't. I don't believe that I recorded any video. I just took pictures, so there's that. Uh, I have another scratching here on my piece of paper that I can't read, so I don't know what else that was supposed to be. 
Oh dear. You know what? I can't even read my own writing. Oh, I know what it is. So, uh, if you follow Mo uh, Mo's game table, we played did a live stream of the Long Road uh, two nights ago. Now I think it was. Uh, enjoyed that immensely. That sort of generated a little narrative episode for for that. I've got a part two coming, and then in the next two weeks, we'll or three weeks, we'll get to actually play the balance of that scenario. Now, it's modern warfare with zombies and vampires, all right? So you gotta let that go. It's one of the scenarios we decided to play that had uh, that had the supernatural elements. Uh, both Mo and I have played without the supernatural elements and love the platoon scale nature of the game and the game system stands by itself you don't need to do any of the uh, supernatural stuff if you don't want to so thoroughly enjoying that and i'm loving the narrative that's popping out because the stories the, the gameplay has been a lot of fun there was a three-player game as so gimpy gamer myself and mo with uh, mark overseeing the rules not that he really helped a whole lot he got a whole bunch of stuff wrong and uh what, and it was still fun anyway i mean we we made some obvious mistakes stuff i should have picked up given that I've played a couple of times, but when you got the designer there, you kind of just defer, right? Uh, anyway, so just to recap, uh, that's the gaming stuff going on. I don't know about what's, what to do next. I, it, by April, I've got to get uh, a full session of Deadly Northern Lights done, like a like it'll be a, maybe two two-hour blocks or two one-hour blocks. I've got a bunch of uh, some folks have sent me some games that I am beholden to them to do review slash gameplay. I haven't done it. It's weighing pretty heavily on me. I feel very guilty. I had somebody uh, lined up to play with during the day, during the work day. I missed twice. I missed the, uh, the, the Zoom sessions or whatever they were, Discord sessions. I'm kind of pissed that I did that because I let him down. I think he's not going to want to <laughs> play with me. I had a couple of uh, email games going. I, I, I just don't have the screen uh, fortitude to sit and look at the screen in the evening and try and respond to gameplay stuff because there's a lot of – I'm feeling like I'm, I keep – diving into that min maxing play by email mode which i hate it takes way too long and it's tedious and it's nowhere near as much fun as playing live so i've i've bailed out on two guys playing uh, one uh, ukrainian 43 and one stalingrad 42 we only got three turns into both i think or maybe one turn of uh, ukraine 43 uh, no 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 fun for me and i think i'm let i was letting them down with the cadence of my uh my my, my log file so bleh. uh the set there's a lot of sales going on right now i had a look at the mmp sale all the things i wanted to buy weren't really on sale uh things that were really deeply discounted some by by a massive amounts were probably on sale for a reason because they're not selling well uh and I am not interested in, in them, and I'm not going to name those titles. But I did pick up Panzer Battles, mainly because I wanted to grab all of the errata counters and the expansion counters for the last Blitz Creek out of it. I really don't have a fascination with sort of the Balkans and the, uh, the southern portion of the Eastern Front, you know, 43, 44 time period. It's just, it's all mountains and nonsense, and that's a big-ass game. I'm not sure I'm man enough to play that uh, by myself. Uh, so we'll see. Now, that's funnily enough, I think I can do Last Blitzkrieg by myself. I think. Uh, not super impressed with the counters in that particular module. Uh, there's no divisional stripes and stuff. I may take a market to them because I don't think I'll ever be selling it. Let me, um, let me just fold a leg here. Okay. Oh, look, I've got a nice old food stain on there. That's classy. Stick with me. i got things going on. All right. So... Uh, that's kind of the gameplay stuff. And I, I don't know what else I can get out on the table at the moment. They've got to be relatively small. So we'll we'll see. And when it's 10.53, uh, you know what? He can wait. I'll, uh, we'll just, let's go through these comments real quick and see what's going on. Aditya, hello. What are you saying here? Let me pop you up. Who's my favorite World War II general? Well, that's a good question. Um, 
not Montgomery, probably not Patton, definitely not Rommel, while somewhat genius, uh, it would probably be uh, potentially um, Guderian or Modal or someone like that. I think one of the German uh, leaders, uh, if not if not one of the higher ups, say uh, uh, Truscott, uh, I think uh, did a did a fantastic job as well. And whoever who was, I think it was Truscott that was running. And there's another guy starts with a T as well. I can't remember the divisional level dude. Anyway, that's a great question. I am not. I am not steeped deeply in uh, names and bits and pieces. Uh, you know, um, Manstein would be one. There are a number of Russian uh, generals that I uh, think have, uh, did a great job uh, without sacrificing, you know, uh, divisions at a time of men. So there's that. Uh, certainly not MacArthur. Let me see who, what else we got going on here. Great question, and thank you for asking that. Uh, just trying to see. Kilroy, thank you for the sub. Treb, good to see you. Jeff, thanks for that comment. That's very nice. And good morning, Rocky. I'm just trying to go through these, and then we'll we'll get through this little. Uh, we'll show these. I'll show you this game. All games in a second. Yeah, so Haro, I tell you what, uh, Narc Paris is another game that I was uh, sent a complimentary copy of, and I have to get, I have to get to. The good news is there's a vassal module coming for that, and I am uh, going to play with Stigler. Uh, so he and I are going to run a scenario together. I will record all of that. Now we may run it on his if he wants to do it on his YouTube channel. That'll be totally cool. But I'll, I'll capture a log file and write my gameplay notes up. I got started with that game, got a little frustrated with some of the uh, foreign language to English wording structure and the rules, made quite a few errors and decided that it was best that I pause my efforts there and I will cycle back to it once Stig and I get to it. So Stigler and I will be doing that very soon. Uh, and Hanno, I, I'm assuming you've played then, if you're saying good vibes. I'd be curious if you have an inclination to share what you like about it and how you found the rule book and stuff like that. Uh, all right. Uh, slim, not sure what that is. Bill's history and war game world. Bill, I don't, I'm trying to look at your thing here. I don't know who you are, but if you have games and you want to talk about them, you can send me an email at bigboardgaming at gmail. I, I don't, um, that's the right way to put this. I don't like taking games for free, <laughs> uh, completely for free. I'll ha happily accept the discount because I, I, as you can see, I now, I have a quite a backlog of uh, games that people have, sent complimentary copies of and I, I like to uh i like also not to be beholden a to a type to a schedule and b to uh give some sort of rosy glow review there's more than enough of that going out there we can all know who those guys are i like to play the games and if you're comfortable with me sharing what i actually think about the games then forewarned is forearmed i will happily have a conversation with you about uh about uh doing something for whatever it is you're designing or doing. Uh, that'd be cool. I, I don't know anything about either your gaming company or you, but I'd be very interested to hear more. Yeah, so Neil, that's a really good question. And so so the gameplay, wow, I am way behind on the comments, aren't I? Uh, the gameplay is 95% uh, the same. What's better slash different would be uh, I think better maps, uh, be the counter art and the counter eye uh, color system. There's some color coding on it that allows you to know whether some, something belongs in the Southern front or the Persian Gulf or the North, or, or it might have a dual stripe. So we know that it can play in both areas. 
Uh, there's some, a lot of nice uh, setup charts for all the scenarios. So you can place the counters if you like doing that. You can place the counters on the setup charts and you'll know that those those units, uh, kind of like an order battle thing, can be used in in various areas, right? Uh, so there's some limit and limitations placed on where things can play. I think there's a lot of cleanup in the rules. I, I think that there's very little that was ambiguous in that system anyway. I think Frank writes extremely tight rules, but there were some things that people got a little spun up around the axle on. I think they cleaned up a lot of that. The only downside I've seen with the Third World War is that it is clearly a OCR scan of the rules and then inserted updates and corrections and case, case, uh, case um, formatting and stuff like that. And so there are, there are some sections of the rules where it's clear that they missed the OCR corrections that need that were needed and words are spaced incorrectly or words are broken up there's like it'll say good and it'll be go space space o space d some weird symbol and then uh you know there's a little bit of that in there uh, i found two three or four different little sections of that great uh big scenario booklet which is awesome and very uh, lays everything out i really like that as well uh, so that's uh, that's pretty neat. Let me just check my phone and make sure this guy is not going to turn a bright blue ribbon. Ah, okay. That's good. You know what the builder wants to do? He wants to drop off some pork tenderloin. But he's gone. So uh, apparently he was out here doing some stuff. It's very nice. So he's going to come bring it next week. Uh, okay. Mr. Sullivan. Oh, gee whiz. We could talk for it. Now I've got more time, but we don't have enough time to talk about this. Uh, Death Ride has lots of potential. I feel like it's a system that's still evolving. It's... Uh, there are a lot of bits and pieces in that system that I think are not cleanly done uh, and that's a that's a it's kind of a subjective terminology there but they're not it's i think it's going to be hard to get sort of historical results going out of the game system perhaps it's a little biased towards the russians i don't know or maybe it's not biased enough towards attacking uh We just found with the four folks who were playing, one of which is a designer, two seasoned grog yards, and myself, that the game, uh, the, a lot of the little systems and mechanics are just a little overwrought and, and they're not well thought through and there are too many mini systems. So for instance, the whole air war stuff was interesting and cool, but really didn't add anything to the game. The whole wreck recovery thing we just looked at that and went yeah no and uh <laughs> some of the combat stuff is just not well put together it's a little messy so there's a great thing there but it's not uh it's not well done i don't think yet it's not finished how's that it is well it may be well done it's just not finished now having said that I purchased the second module for the Salerno game. Unfortunately, my Salerno, my first module for the Salerno game, which Todd Reed loaned to me, uh, is in storage. Uh, so a, a, Todd, you can't get it back yet until next June when we finish this house. And B, uh, when I do get access to it, I'm putting the two together and I'm going to play a larger scenario. So sucker for punishment time, that's what I'll be doing. I had written up a very extensive set of uh, comments on the Death Rite Curse gameplay and the scenarios. And then Mitch Land and I actually sat down and played a scenario alone at a con, uh, just a smaller scenario. And, you know, there were issues with that too. So I, oh, oh, so one of the biggest issues is that the freaking scenario setups and the maps and the definitions for the scenarios it's just messy and it's low resolution and let's not even talk about the counter art being atrocious uh 
Anglo DPI. Uh, but there are significant errors in now two for two of the two scenarios that we set up to play. I found some errors in the Salerno scenario I played. It's not well structured and you literally have to be a former military person to make sure that you understand what someone is saying, uh, what, what the scenario setup guide, guidelines are saying. I think DRK's more recent modules are better uh, done uh, more effectively, but his early stuff is just messy and I'm not a fan uh, of the scenario design and setup. So, whoops, that was a long diatribe. Yeah, and so Fred, I'm, I didn't see this comment, so I'm probably right there, but I'm going to try it again. And if it isn't Tony, what is up, my man? Hey, guys, uh, Tony's been playing a lot with the... So I'm going to put you on the spot here, Tony. Uh, if you're still here, the uh, Locker Low Tactical Solo AI system, maybe you can share a couple of comments on what you like and don't like about it because uh, I've seen you uh, cranking out a lot of video on that. I haven't watched a lot of the content because I'm not interested in the solo AI, but I'd be curious to see what your thoughts were. I own them, uh, but I have not... Uh, played with them so uh oh you haven't played yet okay cool that's good to know hano thank you for sharing oh okay the mighty endeavor what a fun what a fun little game i enjoy that enormously uh one of the better ses titles that is a multi-mapper uh, so you'll have fun with that action eric's game table well we know what he's doing right the clash of arms uh, labatai expert eric good to see you my friend must be early coffee time for you i uh, hope you're having a great day today man you go we got a lot of people here this is cool you guys are cool uh yeah i mark you may have missed my commentary uh, it was pretty brief i have got a problem with my ear i'm going to the doctor next week i'm getting a bunch of stuff fixed i i'm I think I've got a, like a broken elbow. I can, can't lift anything with my right arm. It's really annoying. And I have a, an annoying pain in my ear that won't go away. Uh, I make comments on a type of trumpets. I don't want to beat a dead horse. I have further play to do. The gameplay itself, the movement and combat, are super simple and straightforward. Although I think there's probably an excess of DRMs that uh, and, uh you know excessive drms and column shifts of which are all intermingled with each other for some random reason on one chart when it should be like on one chart but one for drms and one for column shifts the next war series is probably your 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 best bet when it comes to modes you should be looking for or or ideas around how to manage charts they do an excellent job not so much here there are many many charts in this game there's a lot of overhead, uh, a lot of Chrome built on what I would just basically call the Bitter Woods system. So if you know how to move and fight in Bitter Woods, you'll know how to play this game. But then there's everything else that's on top of that, all this massive, these massive chunks of Chrome that I think uh, are very, very fascinating and very interesting. But you have four days of gameplay to get through before you just get to moving and playing then you have the command and the logistics and all the other stuff on top so it's a uh, it's pretty significant uh, yeah i just there's another game that i need to make an investment in to get on with it uh andrew good to see you my friend and spencer what do we got going on hello what all right so I'm going to stop here. Let's do this. Let's look at this. So uh, I got this white box. Damn. So here's the problem with my right arm, right? I can't lift this box with one hand. So uh, I have this big old box here, and it is the uh, entire uh, CFS system, right? Um, plus the cool bit, and this is actually, this box is in really good shape. It's in way better shape than my, my copy. So I now have two copies of this. So I'll be selling my other one. And that one I won't be giving away. This guy's punched. Uh, but it's punched, but in here, it's 
guy shipped me a lot a lot of paper but what uh what i what i bought this for was the uh the the counters for the combined series of five games uh, i think it's five i have right <clears throat> so i wanted these and i knew that half gap box was in much better shape now what i didn't know that was being shipped to me which if i had of i could have saved myself probably 20 bucks in shipping let me see if i can get this done well this is some really nice paper in here maybe i shouldn't complain this is all single single sheet printed uh so it's a central front series update kit which i already have in pdf and i have a printed copy uh there's cheat sheets and then there's the original printed copies of the original rules and then it looks uh it looks actually like there's two copies of the yes there's two copies uh oh unified rules in super big font uh, nuclear weapons artillery uh yeah like this and then so i'm going to go through all that once once again once we get back into the house or get into the house now i've turned this around the wrong way um, so there's that put this down the bottom as well i guess uh i have to go through all the, my, my copy and throw all the stuff away that i don't have or, or don't need i should say empty tray then uh, an unpunched set of counters for which one's this North German plane, which we won't need, right? So I'll be, uh, that's interesting. So I'm going to sell off my combined set of five. I'm not going to want or need these counters when I'm going to have to keep the maps. So I guess, yeah, it's no point trying to sell, sell that off. So there's you know all the original rules for the North German plane, the maps uh, for those two games. Then there's Dino Front as well. There's a picture. Is that picture Berg? No, it's Charles Kemp's. Okay, so Kemp's. You know you gotta love Kemp's because uh, well, he really screwed this up. But besides that, uh, he does. I find when I read articles about what he's uh, saying what he's uh, his setups for games that he's involved in that he writes an article for whether he designed the game or or was helping or whatever the case may be maybe he's just writing an article in a, in an snt magazine he sets this stage and it's all panic and drama and oh the soviets are going to overrun the americans and then when you actually sit down and play the game it's a complete opposite than the americans uh, have the field there so baor fifth core half gap map which is in this box here. Is there two of those? There can't be two of those. All right, so there's all that stuff. And that was what I wanted to show you uh, today. And then, of course, the three, four, second edition sets of rules and the uh, individual module rules. So cool little package. Super excited about getting having these counters. I, I do know, sadly, I because I've gone through these uh, digital versions of these, I was trying to build a vassal module. And I found some errors in the counters. Uh, what do you know? So, uh, uh, oh, gee, surprise. Uh, so uh, there's that. Uh, but we can we can pencil them in or make a note somewhere and go for it. I think I need a folder or something for this stuff. This is crazy. I still want it to break the box. So I thought that was kind of exciting to get in the house. I'm trying to get all this back in here. I don't think it's going to fit. So there's that. That's what I wanted to show you today and then talk about. If you guys have other comments or questions, we're probably going to wrap this up because I, I know that we're all, all about to run off and go uh, visit uh, Tony and Jester and uh, Dean on uh, the war room and then Lock and Low Tactical have their thing going on later today as well. I think they're doing a live stream as well. Uh, so it's a busy, a busy week. I love the Saturday afternoon, sit down and listen to the, the guys do their live stream. I put it on in the background and uh, 
and listen. I Sometimes I participate in the commentary, but not too often. But anyway, all right. All the very best to everyone. I'm going to wrap it up here. Thanks for tuning in on Facebook and YouTube and Twitch. And we'll talk to all of you real soon. Have a good one. I probably forgot something that I was supposed to talk about, but, you know, what's new? <laughs>